What's going on folks? Clayton Youngberg here with AndroidAuthority.com, your number one source for all things Android. And today I'm going to be showing you how to save your Google Nexus 7 from almost certain death by repairing a cracked screen and bad digitizer. Sit tight and we'll walk you through the tutorial step by step, show you exactly how to do it, and you'll have a functioning tablet in no time. So to start off, we must remember that a cracked screen and a bad digitizer is a pretty serious issue, and if you don't feel up to repairing your tablet yourself, please seek the help of a professional. We mean this video only for reference, and we can't be held responsible for any damage you may incur. That being said, let's get into how to repair this bad boy. We're going to need a few tools. The first one being a small prying tool. We're going to need some screwdrivers as well, and a guitar pick or similar prying tool at that. We're going to be using those tools to remove various pieces of the Nexus 7, starting with the back plate. We'll start with our small prying tool. We're going to work along the top, the left, the back, and then finally the right side. I'm going to go ahead and try and pry open the top right corner. And I'll in fact use the small guitar pick because it's fairly easy to do. In fact, you can do this with your fingers if you don't have the tools. And once we have a small crack in the case, we can just go ahead and continue prying it open. As I said, we'll work our way down the left of the device, near the power and volume buttons, and we can in fact slide the tool down to separate the shell completely. Now the back plate is solely that, and we can set that aside for now, and work on the motherboard and display. Alright, next we're going to remove the battery or the power source from the Nexus 7, and we're going to rock the cable left to right to remove it from the motherboard. I'll start at the right, then left, and we simply rock back and forth until the cable removes from its connector. And once it removes, we can set it aside for the rest of the install because we won't want the device to have any power whatsoever. Next, we'll work on the black tape that's holding down the LCD connector. And we can simply pry that up with our spudger or a flathead screwdriver. You'll just want to be careful of the motherboard of the device and not puncture the board itself or uh, ruin any of the circuitry. Now, once the black tape has a little bit of an edge, you can simply grab it with your fingers as well and pull it back. And if you happen to lift up the small metal cover that covers the components, that's uh, not a worry. You can leave that aside. Next, we will work on removing the LCD display cable. And we're just going to work our little spudger under the cable and pry upwards. It should give fairly easily. And then we can move it out of the way for the rest of the install. Simply bend it back. We'll then work on the two other ribbon connectors here. And they have pressure clips that we can lift up from behind. We simply pry that upwards on both ribbons, and we can slide them backwards now. Those remain out of the way for the rest of the install as well, as we get started on removing the screws that surround the body of the Nexus 7. And we simply go at those with a Phillips head screwdriver. And when we reach our final screw, we can simply remove the motherboard from the LCD panel. Now the bezel will be attached to the LCD panel as well, but we'll simply grab the motherboard and guide it outwards. And we can set that aside for now because what remains is the LCD and digitizer. Now the LCD and digitizer is connected to a bezel. And if you didn't buy the full new bezel and only the LCD in repair, you'll want to be careful of the pogo connector because you'll have to get that off intact, as you can see here. But what we'll do is use a heat gun, or you can set it in the sun, to remove the adhesive tape that connects the panel. I chose to set my device in the sun as I didn't have a heat gun, but it worked perfectly and after 30 minutes there is some give to the adhesive. Uh, so we're just going to want to gently work our way. We can use a little tool as well, but once there's a little bit of give, we can work our way around the perimeter of the tablet and remove the adhesive. And the goal here is to remove the panel without breaking it, since there are cracks most likely, and also to save the adhesive tape so we can connect the new one. And as I work around here, I'm just working to make sure the adhesive does not remove itself from the actual bezel. It is a fairly easy task, but you want to take your time. And as you can see, I'm just being very wary right around the cracks of the screen where they reach the perimeter.
you'll want to make sure the glue is hot, like I said. I can't stress that enough. Uh, if the glue is not hot, you'll get a lot of glass on your bezel that you'll have to pick off later. But if you have a successful removal, you should not have any glass in the bezel whatsoever. And if you do, you'll need to clear it out. We'll check for that in a minute. So you can see all the sticky tape is still on the bezel. And the pogo connectors are intact. And as you can see, our display is still very much intact. Uh, it was a fairly clean uninstall, and I have minimal glass on the bezel still. As you can see, there is one small chunk, and you'll want to actually go through and make sure there are no chunks of glass on there because that will incorrectly seat or it can uh, damage the brand new display. And we can simply pry those out with a small screwdriver and make sure it's clear. After that, we're just going to simply line up the new display and insert it into the bezel. Okay, next we're going to reseat our LCD connector ribbon. We're just going to put that back in its connector here. And we can use a small tool to help us shimmy it in there from the left and the right. We can also use some of our original copper heat shield from the display that we removed. I'm going to reseat mine with that. We'll then take the rest of our Nexus 7 body, including the motherboard, and reseat it to the new display. We're just going to want to line up the LCD connector cable and make sure that comes out on top there. And work our way down. Then we'll just make sure we have a tight fit, make sure it's seated properly, and then we can put screws back in the perimeter of the device. And after reassembling everything exactly how it was dissembled, we will have the Moan of Truth, the power on test, where we see if the display is actually functional, and we'll see if the touchscreen is responsive. See, it boots up to the Google screen there, and we'll just let it run through the cycle of boot up. So it looks like the touchscreen is in fact responsive. That means the digitizer was correctly replaced. And we can log in on Wi-Fi and proceed to use our Nexus 7 like new. Now I'll provide a link for a brand new replacement screen and digitizer, but make sure you're getting exactly what you need. And if you have any more questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I'll reply as soon as possible. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Clayton Youngberg with AndroidAuthority.com.